Before the sad events of October 9, 2010, Zara Claire Baker's life was already filled with difficulties. That Saturday morning, around 5.20 a.m., firefighters rushed to a house in Hickory, N.C. after a report of a small fire in the backyard. It was Elisa Baker, 42, who lived there, who called for help. She had noticed the fire when she woke up. Elisa and her husband, Adam Baker, watched as the firefighters put out the flames, which were coming from a pile of mulch. Shortly after, Officer Rollins from the Hickory Police Department arrived. A firefighter had noticed something something strange about a car park there, a silver 1996 Chevrolet Tahoe. Its doors were open, and there was a note on the windshield from Duke Energy. When Officer Rollins looked closer, he saw the note had a message that sounded like a ransom demand, mentioning someone named Mr. Coffee and his family. The note demanded money and threatened harm if the demands weren't met. Mr. Coffee, who turned out to be Adam Baker's boss and the owner of the house they rented, was found safe at home. Despite the alarming note, everyone seemed unharmed. However, the authorities suspected arson because of the fire and the strange note. They didn't understand the full story behind the note yet. Around 2 p.m. on the same day, Adam Baker called the Hickory Police Department. He sounded worried. The police were out here last night after finding a ransom note for my boss's daughter. Baker said, I got up a little while ago and it appears they took my daughter instead of my boss's daughter. I don't know if they set a fire in the yard to distract us to go out and then they snuck in the door. Or, I don't know. My daughter's coming into puberty, so she's in that brooding stage. So we only see her when she comes out, when she wants something. An officer went to their house and, with their permission, searched for the missing girl. But Zahra wasn't found. By the next day, the news of Zahra's disappearance had spread, reaching even the FBI. Elisa Baker, Zahra's stepmother, was taken into custody by the police, but not for Zahra's case. It was for other charges, like writing bad checks. Following the report of the kidnapping, the FBI and local police asked Maria Claxton, who works with the South Carolina Search and Rescue Dog Association, to bring a dog train to find people or bodies. The dog sniffed around the Baker home and their cars. The dog signaled that it found something in both the silver Chevrolet Tahoe and the burgundy Toyota Camry. The cars were taken to the Hickory Police Department for further investigation by the North Carolina State Bureau of Investigation. Meanwhile, police officers went door to door in Zahra's neighborhood, showing her picture to neighbors and asking if they had seen her. They also searched sheds and wooded areas nearby. But by the end of the day, Zahra was still missing, leaving everyone concerned and hoping for her safe return. Alisa Baker explained to the police that she, her husband, and Zahra went to the Oktoberfest in Hickory on Friday evening, October 8, 2010, and returned home around 9 p.m. Zahra went to bed shortly after they got home. Elisa checked on Zara around 2.30 a.m. and then again at 5.20 a.m. When she noticed the fire outside, she believes someone took Zara while they were dealing with the fire. However, Adam Baker, in a separate interview, mentioned that he hadn't seen Zara since October 6, 2010. This raised doubts. Were Elisa's statements accurate or was there a mistake? The police aimed to find out. By the next day, October 10, 2010, the police started collecting and watching surveillance videos from nearby businesses to see if anything unusual or regular could help understand what happened to Zahra. Zahra Baker, a sweet girl with freckles, was born in 2000s in Wagga Wagga, Australia. By 2004, she was living in Giru, a small town in Queensland. Her dad worked at a mill there, and her grandma, Karen Baker, helped take care of Zahra. When Zahra was just six, she got bone cancer. Doctors had to remove her left leg above the knee. Despite this, Zahra stayed brave and positive. She even comforted others battling cancer. In 2007, the cancer spread to her lungs. Zahra got chemotherapy, but lost some of her hearing. Still, she remained lively and happy during her treatments. Zahra's dad moved with her to North Carolina in 2008 after meeting Elisa Fairchild online, they got married. However, Elisa turned out to be more like a wicked stepmother from a storybook. Zara didn't want to leave Australia. The local community helped raise money for her wheelchair and a laptop for school. She even had fun with the Australian military before leaving. Zahra's spirit amazed everyone. Despite challenges, she faced them with a smile. She didn't want to leave her grandparents and friends in Australia. Zahra's story is one of courage and resilience, but it took a tragic turn when she disappeared in North Carolina seeking answers. On a Monday morning in October 2010, Adam Baker went on Good Morning America with Hickory Police Chief Tom Atkins to talk about Zara's disappearance. They asked for help from anyone who might know where Zara was. Adam hinted that his wife, Elisa, might be involved. There were confusing stories about when Adam last saw Zara. Police couldn't confirm anyone had seen her for weeks. Police got search warrants for Adam and Elisa's cars. They found blood-like stains in Adam's car and took drug items. Police also searched where Adam worked. Dogs found strange smells, but no sign of Zara. The next day, the Amber Alert for Zara was canceled. Elisa confessed to writing the fake ransom note. 
Police now thought Zahra might be dead. Elisa was arrested for lying to the police and other crimes. Zahra's family life was not as it seemed. Some people who knew them said Zahra, who was supposed to be homeschooled, suffered abuse. They described Elisa Baker as someone who got angry quickly and would sometimes resort to physical punishment. It was said that Zahra often bore the brunt of her stepmother's anger. Neighbors recalled instances where Elisa would hurt Zahra physically, leaving the young girl in distress. One neighbor, Karen Yant, remembers witnessing this abuse firsthand and trying to intervene to protect Zahra. Another neighbor, Kayla Rotenberry, noticed Elisa a swollen hand once and asked about it. Elisa claimed she hurt her hand while disciplining Zara, accidentally striking her prosthetic leg instead. However, suspicions arose when Elisa tried to hide the injury from her husband, Adam. Brandy Stapleton, another neighbor, corroborated the story of Elisa's injured hand, suggesting that Elisa wasn't the person everyone thought she was. There were whispers among family friends that Elisa might have played a role in Zahra's disappearance. Although previous investigations into Elisa's conduct regarding child abuse had not yielded any evidence, concerns persisted. In court, Elisa faced charges of obstruction of justice, and her bail was set at $40,000. With other charges, her total bail reached $72,200. A troubling tip reached the police on October 14, 2010, suggesting that Zara had been at a house with two men. According to a statement from Captain Thurman Wisnant of the Hickory Police Department, the source claimed that Zara returned home with blood on her private area and legs, implying that she may have been abused by the men. Shockingly, it was also suggested that Elisa Baker had a connection with one of the men involved. Upon investigation, a mattress with a suspicious stain was found outside the mentioned house. The male resident claimed the stain was from him urinating on it, but denied Zara had ever visited. Nonetheless, the mattress was seized as potential evidence. Police were inundated with over 100 leads, some hinting at Zara's mistreatment at home. Additionally, the manager of a former residence mentioned seeing Zara when the family moved in but never again afterward, raising further concerns. A search of Adam Baker's current residence and their previous apartment yielded more evidence, including another mattress. The details surrounding this mattress were not disclosed immediately. Amidst the ongoing investigation, the community rallied around the Bakers, offering support and hope for Zara's safe return. Adam Baker expressed gratitude to the authorities and the public, urging them to continue their search efforts. I just hope they keep looking, he pleaded, desperate to find his daughter. Employees at a Hickory Furniture Store recalled seeing Zara with her stepmother on September 25, 2010, possibly the last time she was seen by someone other than her parents. Zahra's prosthetic leg made her memorable, and workers remembered her watching cartoons there. A photo taken by a family friend on August 9, 2010, showed a bruise under Zara's right eye. Elisa Baker initially resisted the photo, but it was taken to cheer Zahra up. Zahra's stepmother often blamed her clumsiness for such bruises, according to a former neighbor. Zahra was said to frequently have bruises, with her stepmother always offering explanations like falls or mishaps due to her prosthetic leg. Relatives and neighbors claimed Zahra was subjected to beatings, primarily by Elisa Baker, for minor reasons. She just had a horrible home life, said Brittany Bentley, a relative, on The Early Show. Zahra was allegedly confined to her room for most of the day, given minimal time to eat and endured harsh treatment from her stepmother. Former neighbors described Elisa Baker as harsh and recalled instances of Zahra going to school with black eyes before being homeschooled. District Attorney Jay Gaither noted the emotional toll the case had on law enforcement. Elisa Baker's MySpace page, reported by ABC News, featured a slideshow with photos of Zahra, one caption reading, The Dark Child! In their quest for crucial evidence, investigators focused on a landfill in Caldwell County, about 20 miles from Zara's home. Hickory Police Chief Tom Atkins didn't disclose the exact item they sought, but mentioned searching various services used by the Baker family, including waste disposal. We hope that if we find this evidence, that it will provide a good, solid timeline that will assist us in working this case. Atkins stated, as reported by ABC News, after interviews and identifying the model and serial numbers of Zara's prosthetic leg from her medical records, police decided to search the landfill. Despite their efforts, they didn't uncover Zahra's leg or any other relevant evidence. Further scrutiny into Elisa Baker's past revealed she had been married at least seven times with instances of bigamy, where she was married to multiple men simultaneously. These revelations led to additional charges against her. On October 24, 2010, with little hope of finding Zara alive, police took Elisa Baker to a location near her previous home in Hudson, NC, to conduct a search. While the exact what? reason wasn't disclosed initially, later reports revealed that she had led them there, mentioning they might find Zara's blood, bones, and bodily fluids in the drain pipes of the residence. 
Elisa's cell phone records might have also guided the search. Speculation arose about a possible plea deal, although authorities downplayed it. The next day, investigators took Elisa to another location nearby, off Dudley Shoals Road and Christie Road, where the family once lived. On October 27, 2010, Zara's prosthetic leg was found at the Dudley Shoals Road location, triggering an extensive search of the area, including the nearby creek banks. For more evidence, in early November, a bone was discovered in the same area and sent for DNA testing. About a week later, additional potential human remains were found along the banks of Little River, close to where the bone was located. Subsequently, a logger working nearby found a briefcase in the woods containing a blanket stained with a dark substance, likely blood. The briefcase and its contents were sent to the crime lab for examination to ascertain their relevance to the case. Police search warrants hinted that Zahra may have been dismembered, although the cause of her death remained undisclosed. It was believed that her remains might have been wrapped in a bed comforter and car cover before being discarded in a trash bin behind a grocery store. In early November 2010, Emily Dietrich, Zara's biological mother, gave her first media interview since Zara's disappearance. She spoke with a reporter from Australia's Channel 7 News, revealing that she hadn't seen Zara since giving custody to Adam Baker while Zara was still an infant due to her postpartum depression. She recounted how Baker had vanished with Zara shortly after she granted him custody and how she had struggled to locate them over the years, only to have Baker disappear each time she found them. He had no right to do any of it to keep her from me, Dietrich said in the emotional interview. Dietrich, from Wagga Wagga, expressed her heartache over discovering Zahra's whereabouts just days before her disappearance and presumed death. Why did it happen that I only found her and three days later this happened? She tearfully questioned. I never got to say goodbye. I never got to say hello. Believing Zahra to be deceased, Dietrich explained, Mothers just have this bond with their children and just having no hope in me makes it hurt even more with what they're finding and the way they're saying she was treated. Concerned about the ongoing investigation, she feared the police would uncover evidence that would tell a story I don't want to hear. Dietrich's interview coincided with the revelation by Hickory investigators that they had discovered a bone that could belong to Zara. A week later, Dietrich traveled to the U.S. with an Australian news crew and visited the memorial outside Zahra's former home. Overwhelmed with grief, she wept as she observed the tributes left by mourners, including letters and stuffed animals. Dietrich provided her DNA to detectives for comparison with the bone found and any other potential remains. I want her to sit in jail, and I want her to live every day of her life remembering why she's there and what she's done, Dietrich later stated. She needs to sit there and rot. Chief Atkins announced at a news conference that the remains found at various locations had been positively identified as Zara's. He expressed deep regret and acknowledged the devastating outcome of the investigation. It is with great regret that I stand before you today, Atkins somberly stated. I've been dreading this moment since early on in this investigation. As investigators, we are trained to follow leads, but never give up hope the evidence may take us in the wrong direction and the outcome may be different. Investigators, agents, and officers who worked on this case are devastated that they could not find Zahra alive and bring her home safely. We have recovered enough physical evidence to believe we have found Zahra. Atkins confirmed that DNA extracted from the bone matched Zahra's DNA sample. Additional remains were still undergoing testing but appeared consistent with those of a child. Police were also utilizing DNA samples from Adam Baker and Zahra's birth mother to compare against the remains. This case isn't over and we won't rest until we have all the information we need to bring the people to justice who hurt Zahra, Atkins emphasized. Sized. District Attorney Gaither echoed Atkins' sentiments, stating, We're continuing to put a case together. The DA's office is working with law enforcement and hope to see some resolution in this case that will result in charges being filed in the near future. According to ABC News, alleged jailhouse letters written by Elisa Baker to a crime memorabilia dealer provided further insight. Elisa claimed neither she nor her husband had killed Zahra, but suggested Adam had committed something horrifying to the child after her death. We really didn't kill her, but what he did after the fact is kind of horrifying, Alyssa purportedly wrote. Makes me scared of him. He knows what happened to Zara, and yet I'm the one in here at least for now. The cops know where she is and what he has done, so I probably am going to go ahead and file for a divorce. I have lost my whole life anyway. In January 2011, court documents and the Charlotte Observer revealed shocking details provided by Elisa Baker to the police. She allegedly confessed that Zara had died on September 24, 2010, two weeks before being reported missing, and claimed that Adam had dismembered her body. Elisa asserted that Zara's death was natural and that she and Adam had disposed of her body parts the following day, citing their uncertainty about what to do after her passing. However, this conflicted with earlier testimony from a furniture store manager who claimed to have 
seen Zara with her stepmother on September 25. Further investigation unveiled disturbing details about Elisa Baker's online activities. It was discovered that she, possibly along with her husband and another individual, engaged in role-playing games on the internet, including one involving a chainsaw massacre, allegedly played on September 27, just two days before Elisa claimed Zara's death. Adam Baker vehemently denied any involvement in his daughter's dismemberment, expressing disbelief and horror at the accusations. There's no way I would do that to my baby, Baker adamantly stated to WBTV News. There's no way in the world I would hurt my daughter. His attorney dismissed Elisa Baker's claims as a desperate attempt to divert attention from the truth. In February 2011, the North Carolina medical examiner released the autopsy results, dispelling Elisa Baker's claims of Zara's natural death. The autopsy concluded that Zara died from undetermined homicidal violence, refuting any notion of a natural cause. However, due to the absence of many bones, including Zara's skull, right arm, and most of both legs, the exact circumstances remained elusive. On February 2011, a grand jury indicted Elisa Baker on second-degree murder charges. The indictment highlighted highlighted Elisa's history of physical, verbal, and psychological abuse towards Zahra. It also accused her of concealing Zahra from her relatives to impede the investigation and desecrating Zahra's body to hinder detection and prosecution. No charges related to Zahra's death were brought against Adam Baker. District Attorney Gaither emphasized that credible evidence pointed solely to Elisa's involvement in Zahra's murder. Adam Baker addressed the investigation, vehemently denying any role in his daughter's death or dismemberment. He portrayed Elisa as manipulative and abusive, claiming he was often away at work and trusted Elisa's reports that Zara was in bed. Expressing regret, Adam lamented introducing Elisa into their lives, suggesting Zahra might still be alive if not for Elisa's presence. Elisa's bond was increased by $200,000 following the murder charge, totaling $307,700. In September 2011, she pleaded guilty to murdering Zahra and received an 18-year prison sentence. Subsequently, in 2013, she was handed an additional 10-year sentence for drug-related charges. Subscribe now to stay informed and engage with the true crime community. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. We want to hear from you. Leave a comment below sharing your thoughts and theories about the Zara Baker case.